Hey SAS Preppers, it's Hayden here. In this video, I'm going to be going over some multiplication questions from the arithmetic papers in the Key Stage 2 SAS. A little bit of short multiplication to start with, and then we're going to move into long multiplication, those scary two mark questions that we forget how to do sometimes. So let's stop forgetting how to do it and learn along with me. Here we go. So diving in then with some short multiplication, really, really simple question. This came up in the 2023 SATS paper. I'd expect some children to be solving this in their heads, a bit more confident, but you don't need to because you can also write it down. So just remember when we're, when we're laying out short multiplication, we're going to put our largest number on top. It's just easier. And we're going to put our single digit underneath in the, in the uh, end column. Okay. Whatever that last column is, we're going to put it there and our symbol, nice and laid out. You don't need to use a ruler. Your teachers might tell you to. You don't need to use a ruler in the sats. It's a waste of time. Just draw a quick line underneath or no line at all if you really wanna be a rebel. So here we go. Sometimes people like that line as well for security. We're gonna work through like this. We're gonna do uh, eight lots of five. Then we're gonna do eight lots of six and as simple as that. Eight lots of five is 40. I can't write 40 in my ones column. So I'll keep the zero and exchange my four tens into the tens column. Eight times six, of course, we're in the tens column now. So eight lots of six tens. 48 tens plus another four tens gets me to 52 tens and that's it my answer is 520 so short multiplication nice and easy don't forget to exchange across as you go like you would do in column addition here's another one for you maybe you can pause the video have a go at this one again i'd expect some children to be doing this in their heads and noticing that we've got four lots of 700 and four lots of two and putting it together but for the sake of practice let's just write it down 702 goes on top four goes in the end column the final digit and we're going to work through from the final digit backwards so here's my line i'm going to do it down here because my line was too wonky four times two is eight moving along four times zero anything times zero is zero and four times seven is 28 keep my eight exchange my two but because there's nothing left to do I can just bring my two up and get an answer of 2,808. Nice and accurate. All right. Oh, no. The answer box is in a different place, Mr. Stevens. What do we do? Guys, don't worry. Okay, I'm going to do a whole video. So do check it out, by the way. It might already be out. A whole video on how to interpret when the answer box is in a different place. If it's not just in the standard place at the end, what do you do? Because sometimes you need to use inverse. And sometimes, like in this situation... You just need to answer the question like you would before. And my simple explanation here would be, if I can just move the equals to the other side, is the question any different? No, it's exactly the same as that question. They've just put it on the left instead. It's still saying what is equal to 596 times 7. So let's solve it. 596, one box per digit, multiply by 7. That's mul the, multiple, the multiplier goes in the last um, column. And we work through backwards. 6 times 7 is 42. So I'll exchange the 4 tens from 40 across and keep the 2 in the 1s. I've done that one. Move on to 7 times 9. If you know your times tables, hopefully that's going to speed you up. 9 times 7 is 63. So, but don't forget to add on the extra 4 that we had from the first calculation. So just count up on your fingers if you need to. You're on 63. 64, 65, 66, 67. Keep the 7. Exchange the 60, becoming 6 in the next column. And then finally... 7 times 5, which is 35, plus the 6. Now, I know that 35 plus 5 gets me to the next 10, 40. So 35 plus 6 must be 41. Exchange across, there's nothing left. So pull up the 4, and you've got your final answer there of 4,172. I've scribbled in the box, but obviously you guys wouldn't have done that. Otherwise, uh, you get in trouble. Okay, awesome. So that's it. Short multiplication is nice and easy, okay? Long multiplication is probably why you clicked on this video. This is where people are getting stuck. So first of all, let's just break down what this means. If that seven wasn't there, then we'd just be doing exactly what we did before. Four times eight, four times zero, four times five. But the seven being there simply means we're gonna break down 74 into 70 and four. And we're just gonna do two lines of multiplication. We're gonna do four times 508 and we're gonna do 70 times 508 and then all we're going to do is to put it back together and make it into one answer is just add those two answers back together and uh, we'll get our final answer which will uh, get us the two marks awesome stuff the reason it's two marks is because it just takes a bit longer and uh, i always moan at my children at school and i say all these questions are really is just lots of times tables and you'll agree in a second i'm sure so let's break this down this time we're not gonna have one uh, row for our answer we're gonna have two because like i just said in this first row we're gonna times by four in the second row, we're going to times by 70, and then we're going to add them together 
and get a final answer below. And the reason we lay it out like this is so that it's already laid out in the columns for the addition stage. It's worth doing. It's the most efficient way. Let's whiz through it then. So let's pretend that 7 wasn't there and just do 508 times 4. 4 times 8 is 32. Exchange the 3 across. 4 times 0 is 0, but I must add on the extra 3, so I get a 3. And 4 times 5 is 20. Because there's nothing left, I can just put my 2 and my 0 like that. And I've done the first part. The 4 is done. Now I'm multiplying by 70. Now if you think about it, if you multiply by 70 or any multiple of 10, what you're really doing is... You're multiplying by 7, and then you're multiplying by 10, which just puts a 0 on the end, right? If it's a whole number, all it does is add a 0 to the end of that number, yeah? So we can actually just put the 0 in straight away, okay? And now we can just pretend, we've done the 0, we can just pretend we're multiplying by 7. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, we're multiplying by 7 with a 0 on the end, so really we're multiplying by 70. So let's start here. 7 times 8 is 56. So put my 6 in, carry my 5 across. 7 times 0 is 0, but must add my 5 on. It goes here. And finally, 7 times 5 is 35, because there's nothing left. I can just write both digits there straight away. And that is it. Now, the risks here are, if you do your carry digits underneath too big, it might mess up the digits below. Now, I know that if I was a child, I'd forget that that was a 6, and I'd think that was a 0 with a bit of scribble on it. But actually, we need to remind ourselves that that's 6. So where you put your carry digits is up to you. Sometimes I've seen children do them at the top so that they don't get in the way. It's up to you. Now we've got to add it all together. 2 plus 0 is 2. 3 plus 6 is 9. 0 plus 5 is 5. 2 plus 5 is 7. And 3 plus nothing is 3. Put my comma in just for good measure. Don't need it though. 37,592 is my final answer. And that is how you get two marks. So just breaking it down real quick. The reason I say it's a times tables question is because all we did really was 4 times 8, 4 times 5, 7 times 8, 7 times 5, and then we did a bit of addition. You know, learn your times tables, guys. Right, you try this one. Pause the video. What's the answer? Okay, so this one's from the 2022 SATS paper, just out of interest. And again, let's break it down. I'm going to do it a bit quicker this time, guys. I'm going to lay it out. I know this one's going to be times in by 3. This one's going to be times in by 80. Then we add together, and I'm even going to put in my zero straight away. So I don't forget that this one is times by 80, not just 8. Awesome. Let's work through. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 0 plus 2 is 2. 3 times 6 is 18. There's nothing left, so I can write it in. There's my first line done. Moving on to times 80. The zero is in, so now we can just pretend it's 8. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 0 is nothing, plus the 5 is 5. And 8 times 6 is 48. Awesome. Simply add it together. We've done the times 3. We've done the times 8. Put them back together to get 83 lots. That's what this would be here, this answer. 1 plus 0 is 1. 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. So carry the 1. 1 plus 8 plus 1. Well, the two 1s make 2. And 8 and 2 make a number 1 to 10. So 10. And then one more is 5. So my answer here is going to be 50,000. 381. Not so bad. Another two marks for me. Woohoo! So, they're not too bad. You always get, in the SATS paper, you always seem to get a three digit by a two digit, and quite often they put a zero in there or, or like a nice number to use. So that it's not too time consuming. But then there's always later on in the paper, as you'll see here, this is the 2023 paper, question 29 is a much bigger multiplication question. You've got a four digit by a two digit and there's no zeros this time. So there's probably going to be a lot more exchanging. But we have got two twos and the two times table is pretty easy. So this might not be as bad as it looks. Either way, write it down on your bit of paper or something. Have a practice. What's the answer? Okay, we're back in the room. Let's do it. Let's lay it out. Two rows. My addition row. This one's times three. This one's times 40, so therefore this one would be times 43 would be my answer. I'm going to add those together, and I'm going to put in my placeholder 0 because of the 40. Everything is set up. If you can get into a good habit of setting up like that, you're likely to not make a mistake. The biggest mistake I see children make is honestly just forgetting that 0, and therefore all their numbers are shunted across into the wrong column by 1 because they forgot the 0, and then, then their answer is completely wrong. Right, here we go. 3 times 7, 21. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 2 times 3 again, this time it's just 6 because there was nothing exchanged. And finally, 3 times 5 is 15. Awesome. Next one starts with a 0. Great. We can just pretend it's 4 now and not 40. 4 times 7 is 28. 
4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. Notice there are a lot more exchanging now. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1. This time is 9. And 4 times 5 is 20. Final step is to add them all together. And after this, I'm going to tell you how you get one mark on these questions, just so you know. 1 plus 0 is 1. 8 plus 8 is 16. 6 plus 1 is 7. 5 plus 9 is 14. 1 plus 1 is 2. And 2 plus nothing is 2. You get 224,000. 761. So out of interest, to get one mark on these questions, the official SATS guidance uh, to, for, the mark, for the people that mark them says this. You have to show the whole calculation and you have to show that you know the method correctly. If you make one arithmetic error inside of this, you can still get one mark. For example, let's just say I forgot to add on that little one down there and I got an answer of to 14761 but I didn't make any other mistakes in there I would get one mark if you've made more than one mistake it goes down to zero so if I made that mistake and I also put three times seven as I don't know 24 and I got a four here so this became a four and I made that mistake I'm down to zero marks even though I've shown the right method so you're allowed to make one single mistake uh, with the correct method to get the one mark all right, one more for you guys. Uh, this is from the 2022 paper. You're lucky it's got a zero in it. Makes it a bit easier. Go on, how quickly can you get the answer this time? Right, let's whiz through it, ready? I'm gonna go super, super teacher speed now. So lay it out, put my zero, put my plus. I'm not even gonna write seven and six now. I know, I know what we're doing. So seven times eight is 56. Seven times seven is 49, plus the five gets me to 54. 7 times 0 plus 5 is just 5, and 7 times 4 is 28. Okay, next one starts with 0. 6 times 8 is 48. Let's change the 4. 6 times 7 is 42, plus the 4 is 46. 6 times 0 is 0, plus the 4 is 4, and then 6 times 4 is 24. Add them together. Look, my adding symbol was in the, in the way there. I should have moved it across a bit. 6 plus 0 is 6. 8 plus 4 is 12. Uh, let's make that 5 and 1 make another 6. So we just get 6 plus 6 is 12. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 more is 13. 2 plus 4 plus 1, 6 plus 1 is 7. And then 2 is left. And we get our answer of 2, 7, 3, 2, 2, 6 for 2 marks. If we made one arithmetic error, we, we, we would have got one mark. Guys, I hope this has helped you. Um, I've got one final really, really tricky question. For you all to solve. <laughs> just kidding, it's not tricky. Anything times zero is zero, guys. Please don't forget that. Sometimes in the sats, they'll just bang in a question like this. It's a free mark, isn't it? If you're not putting zero, then you know what you're doing. It's a free mark. Sometimes children put 989. That would be one times 989 equals 989. So anything times zero is zero. A million times zero is zero. It doesn't matter. It's going to be zero. Guys, going to leave you with this. In the comment section down below, let me know the answer to these three questions. Don't get scared because the answer box is to the left. It's just, it's still the same question. They just put the equals on that side instead of this side. doesn't really matter. Three questions there. Um, the last one being really, really, really tricky still. Let me know your answers in the, answer, in the comments down below and check out the rest of this SATS series to help you prepare for your SATS and ace those exams. Guys, I'll see you in the next video.